All right, good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Bill's World Bible School, and you are watching Healed Because God Said So. Uh, my guest back with me this evening is Pastor Kyle Butler. How you doing, my brother, while you're taking a good drink of coffee there? <laughs> I'm my doing turn. wonderful. <laughs> this is Dr. Bill's World Bible School, and you uh, are watching Healed. Yeah, we're getting some feedback. Okay, there you go. That should be okay. I'm doing wonderful, okay. wonderful, wonderful. Good. And how are you? You know, I'm doing good. Um, I haven't made an announcement yet about what's going on this week, but I will be soon. So I'm not going to take that for this show. Uh, but but I, I like to let my many, many, many friends all over the world know a little bit about what's happening and um, and encourage you to be in faith. And having said that, um, I, I have my notes that have been prepared for a couple of weeks now, and we've kind of had this Internet issue. It's nothing to do with our webinar. We pay uh, good money for this webinar system that, that it does one thing for, as, uh, um, in spite of our previous system. This does one thing, and it's the thing we wanted it to do, and that's streamed directly to Facebook. And uh, so that's what we're able to do now. Uh, but um, anyway, I, um, I just want to, to, to uh, share with you something tonight, everybody, that as we're talking about healed because God said so, we're not talking about healed because I feel healed. We're not talking about healed because I look healed or sound healed. As a matter of fact, um, uh, our mutual friend, um, Irvin D. Reed, which uh, hopefully is going to get to be with me on Keenan Dynamics in um, uh, late December. We haven't confirmed a date yet. Uh, he said something very profound today, and I'm sure you've already read it. Um, Everything God did in Jesus was to fix everything that was wrong in us. And he concludes that statement by saying, you are fixed. Now, I know that's a tough one for people uh, because people don't feel fixed. Same thing with healing. Sometimes people don't feel healed. And so they base what they feel, what they touch, what they see on uh, as their, uh, their ultimate reality, their truth. Uh, but if we put our truth in, let, let's take the principle of salvation. Now, you and I both know that salvation did not take place the moment you said yes to Jesus like we were raised to believe. It took place when Jesus paid the price for all humankind. But here's the fact. Uh, if I base my salvation, remember the days when people would say, well, you know, I just had a really bad week and I sure don't feel saved, which has nothing to do with nothing. OK, but if you base your salvation on what you feel like, then you're going to go around not feeling like you're a part of, of, of Christ all of your days. Same thing's true about healing. And that's why this show, for me at least, is so important because people everywhere are dealing with this uh, how I feel factor versus what he said factor. And, you know, I just like to say it this way. If God said it, you remember that old saying, uh, if God said it, I believe it and that settles it. Well, someone came up and said, well, God said it, that settles it, whether I believe it or not. Well, I get that. But what I believe is a pretty important factor here. I Absolutely. believe in what he did. So uh, I don't want to take all the time. I'm going to get you to jump in here in a big way in a moment. But uh, I wanted to start with a scripture that's more faith than it is healing. As a matter of fact, it really doesn't have anything to do with healing in the sense of the scriptural context. And that's Hebrews 11:6. You know, there was a day I read this scripture but without faith, it's impossible to please him. We'll just stop there. And I, I have searched for a good Greek uh, Bible translation that really does that justice, but I couldn't. And so what I discovered in the Greek language, this doesn't say without faith, because without faith would imply then that it's possible to have no faith. Even when the scripture says that some have no faith, really what they're saying is the same thing when Jesus was on the the. The, the, the lake with his disciples says, why is it that you have no faith in the King James? What he was actually saying is, why is it that you're not exercising faith? So it is impossible to have no faith, but it is possible to have faith. And what the scripture actually translates in the Greek is to say, but without exercising faith, it is impossible to please him. And so him there uh, is in italics, which we see five words later, the word God 
So God now becomes transitional and it transposes to that position. So without exercising faith, it's impossible to please God. But then I, we always went around feeling like, man, I'm just not pleasing God. Now, I know God's pleased with me, but I don't feel like he's pleased with me. So the Holy Spirit said to me, did you consider the word pleased? Now, I love how the Holy Spirit deals with this. Yeah. And of course, I looked and I thought, this ain't no big deal. But I searched till I got to the very root end and I found this scripture to say, but without exercising faith, it is impossible to fully agree with God. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. so now we're talking about healing. If I don't exercise faith in what he paid for, not yesterday, not the day I came to know Jesus as a young boy, but the day he paid for it, my faith is the, the, the thing that, that interlocks with what he did for me. So now I'm saying, you know what, Jesus? I've been wrong all this time. You've been right all this time. And I'm hooking up with your rightness so that I can be uh, operating in a place of rightness. So that's where people are, Pastor, with with um, healing is, you know, how do I hook up with God and agree with him? And of course, you and I know to agree with God, we got to believe what God has said. So jump in from there, if you would. And um, let's let's roll with this. You know, I'm really glad, Dr. Bill, that you brought into the conversation, the faith part, <clears throat> mm -hmm. you know, and I'm sure you've probably have seen this and, and witnessed this through the years. There are different camps we've lived in or, or we've, right. the different camps we've we fellowshiped in mm -hmm. let me say it that way and in the in the word of faith camp and in the healing camp uh you know th there's there's healing crusades that that go on all the time and people come from all the part all parts of the country and even the world to attend these seminars to quote mm -hmm. get healed and the, the 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 issue with that is is number one um you're seeking for something that you don't believe you have. That's, that's first of all. Uh, secondly, um, when you go, most of the time, people will come back the same way they came. And yeah. when, when that happens, of course, the questions come and the question arises. Well, why didn't I get saved? And too often, which, which is really tragic, too often people were told, well, you didn't have enough faith. Yeah, you, you yeah. just didn't have enough faith. And my gosh, how do you look a stranger in the eye and you know nothing about what they've done? You know nothing about how much they've prayed. You know nothing about how much they've believed. You've, you know nothing about them in that degree. And you make that decree over them. Oh, that's because you didn't have enough faith. Mm -hmm. That can be an absolutely demoralizing statement to someone who, as I just mentioned, may have just poured every. Everything they had over the past uh, course of time into building their faith or growing their faith or whatever you want to say in that regard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we, you know, we were in that camp for a while, and, and of course, we we tried to build our faith muscles and get more faith because the implication was if you had yeah. more faith, then you can get what God has, or you can get. What, what you want from God or need for God, then we spent time with our word faith confessions and we spent time watching the words that we said. And we did all this work trying to grow something, build something, because again, the implication was if you have little faith, you get nothing. But if you got a whole lot of faith, you get everything. And, and that misconception probably derailed the, the, the true essence of faith as you just described it more than anything else. Because that's simply what faith is, is, is coming into an agreement or exercising what you already have yeah. and to come into agreement with what's there. So just like you come home and you, you, you exercise your faith in your key working for your door, you exercise your faith in your couch holding your weight, you exercise your faith that your TV is going to come on when you hit the remote control. So we all have faith. And it's, it's just a matter of exercising our faith. We don't need to grow our faith to unlock our door because we put the key in it, the, the lock does the work. Mm -hmm. We don't have to grow our faith to sit on the couch and sit there in front of the couch and pray and, 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 and hope and, and God, I, you know, I believe you, God, or anything like that, that this couch is going to hold me. We don't right. have to do that for our right. television. We don't have to do that when we prepare our meals. We don't have to do that for anything. It's just a matter of exercising what we already have. Now, that yeah. simplifies things tremendously for us. 
Because what it does, it puts us in a mindset of truth that says, hey, this is not me working for something. This is about me coming to agreement with what's there. And let me tell you, my good friends, coming to agreement is a whole lot easier than trying to work because there yeah. is no yeah. faithometer that tells you when you're full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, there's no dial that you can get up every morning and check to see, you know, if you're if you're empty, medium, or full. There, there's no dial. So, but there is a faith, as Romans tells us. I believe, yeah, it's in Romans that He has given to everyone the measure of faith. So we have yeah. that. We can count on that. We know we have that, and we put our security in that. And it's just a matter of exercising what He's done for us and coming into. Well, we, we first need to come into the truth to know what mm -hmm. he's done for mm -hmm. us and then just exercise the faith we've already been given in what he's done for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and, you know, um, I, I understand um, a, a person who's and I, you know, I, it's hard for me to explain this to people, but I'm going to very vaguely explain it tonight. I, I am a person who understands dealing with having dealt with a long term uh, physical situation. Now, during that time, I believed God. I prayed for the sick. The sick has got healed. I've made advancements where the medical profession said there was no chance of being better. Uh, what I believe in is not being better. This is not uh, uh, any type of psychological exercise. This is being what he said that we are in spite of a present condition you're experiencing in this world. And pastor, I know that we could ex talk all day long about what people say about, well, if you believe it, then shouldn't your, your natural situation change? Yeah, I mean, let's face it. Our, our finances should be perfect above and beyond. I remember the days we confessed that we had above and beyond, we had abundance because God says we have abundance, not necessarily alone in money, but we have the abundance of, of himself. He is uh, our measure of grace. He is our measure of faith. Um, but I just understand this, that, that the days that I haven't felt healed are the days I declare I'm healed because he said so. I declare it out loud to faith sometimes. I declare it over the internet uh, quite often. And sometimes I declare it in a very, very uh, small voice. You know, the Bible says that we're to meditate on yep. the word of God. That, that word uh, med meditate there uh, means to mutter, to declare even under our breath. And uh, uh, and so the reality is, is that when it comes to the measure of faith that you, you so uh, so wonderfully mentioned there, brought in tonight, uh, that that to to have the measure of faith, we need to understand uh, uh, as best as I can uh, uh, ascertain from the original language is that we have the measure of His faith. Yes. Now, if you have the measure of His faith, then. Why are people trying to get more faith and told they don't have enough faith? And if I pray harder, if I fast, if I uh, do all of these rituals and, and be honest with you, I'm not against communion. I'm, if you want to do foot washing, do foot washing. Okay. If you want to do all, do all that stuff. But one of the problems with it is pastors, we put faith in that doing the rituals makes everything OK. And all that did at that moment was bring us back under the law. The right. fact is. If I have the measure of his faith in me, then what do I have? Well, what I believe we have is not what we would classify faith as in his faith, but we have a belief system. We have to, the ability to be persuaded of one thing or another thing. I'm healed. I'm not healed. Uh, that's where pe we were talking about on one show where you know, people do, he loves me, he loves me not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this isn't an issue, folks. you got to make up your mind that you're healed because God said so, no matter what you're feeling like. And I remember our last show that when the, the Internet was going down two weeks ago, you were talking about <laughs> that day you, you broke a tooth. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, how do you deal with that stuff? Well, you know. I'm going to the, the doctor very soon. I'll be making an announcement about that tomorrow. I'm going to the doctor very soon. And how am I going? I'm going in faith. Yep. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other way. Faith in, in Jesus. The faith of God resides in us. Yeah. You know, when I broke my tooth, <laughs> uh, my belief system said, uh -huh. it's very well possible bef before I get to the dentist, I'll have a brand new tooth. 
Now, my belief system believes this. Now, it didn't manifest itself that way, and that's okay because it got repaired at the dentist. But my belief system believed that it could be, that it was, it was possible because uh, there's, there's, you know, our, our father is, is limitless in his ability, and, and I'm limitless in my ability uh, when I partner with my father and what he's done for us. You know, when we really start to take a look at as he is, so are we. Think about it. It's, it's, it's really a mind game for us because our minds will con- try to condition us and tell us that that can't be possible. That that just can't be possible. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it, it absolutely is possible and it is absolutely true. I mean, you know, we have no problem accepting, you know, believers have no problem accepting the fact that we were crucified with him. We've we, we got no problem with that. We've got no problem believing that we, we rose again with him. No problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most believers don't even have a problem believing that we're seated with him right now in the heavenlies. No problem with that either. <laughs> but when we say, as he is, so are we. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Because we saw these fantastic miracles that Jesus performed. Mm -hmm. We saw him do supernatural things. We saw him perform uh, against the elements, walking Mm -hmm. on water, calming storms, walking, disappearing through crowds, walking through closed doors. We saw him do these things and we think, okay, yeah, all right, no, no way possible that we are as he is, you know, but we are. We uh-huh. really are. Uh-huh. And I believe, you know, I believe one of the things Jesus did by coming here, I believe he came to show us how to live here in this life fully um, dominant over every single thing. Think and about it. sickness is a thing that we should be completely dominant over in our, in our lives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, if Jesus came to show us how, now let, let, let's let's take this theologically tonight. Um, it, it is it has been said it has been let me it's been suggested that Adam and Eve were not real people but symbolic of different nations such as the church and the nation of Israel or of of the nature of man and the nature of, of Christ. Uh, that doesn't matter to me. I, I teach it how I see it till I see it differently, as in all things. But let's let's fast forward all of that to the new covenant that Jesus came. I believe the actions of Jesus. Now, here's how we have to look at. I teach the book of Revelation not as an actual step by step play of what right. happened, but as a revelation of what happened. So John wrote down what he heard, but he also had time to process that right. and write it down as he saw it. Okay. Right. Then, okay. Now, now with Jesus, did he actually walk the earth? I believe he did. Did he actually come born of a virgin, uh, uh Mary, um, uh, who had a, a non-biological father named Joseph. The heavenly father was always his father, always was, always will be. And did he physically live among mankind so that he could become a human and God and have feel the feelings of our infirmities, be able to identify with humankind in a, a most realistic manner. Yeah, I believe he did. But when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, here's our hang up. People read that pervade and say, yeah, that's exactly what Jesus did. Well, let me just say this to you. Uh, first of all, the Bible wasn't actually written down till after the events took place, okay? So they wrote down the revelation of what they believe they heard and and their rendition of what they saw. So that's why you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, the... the, uh, the um, synoptic gospels, uh, three different versions of the same thing, and they don't really read the same. No. Okay, it, it'd be very different. And then you have John, who, who the beloved, who let, who was constantly had his head on the chest of Jesus. Did he literally, or did it mean that he was hearing the heartbeat of God? Okay, and so having said that, to say as he is, so am I in this world. And then we look at our lives and we say, man, I'm struggling with finances. 
I'm struggling with health problems. I'm struggling with a bad marriage. I mean, 50 people left my church and left me with 20. I mean, I, uh, you know, my, my car broke down. My, my house is in badly need of repair. And woe is me. And I'm having a hard time. And man, if somebody just cared about, if God only cared about me, my life would be, you know, we go through this whole thing. And yet we quote, as he is, so are we in this world. Right. Now, what about when you got a broken tooth? <laughs> what about when you got a backache? What do yeah. you what do you got when you when you you twist your foot? Someone said the other day they they twisted their foot or they, they actually broke their foot, had surgery, it was up and about doing fine. I mean, do we say, okay, I'm having a really someone says, How you doing? Oh man, life really stinks right now. I'm having a really bad now. Is that what Jesus would say? that would actually cause us to say, as he is, so are we in this world. <laughs> we got to look at Jesus. Did Jesus have a bad day when they were beating him, when they were spitting on him, when they were treating him? Uh, it, they didn't put a crown of thorns on him to uh, honor him as uh, as royalty. They were mocking him. Right. They gambled his garments. They were mocking. They stripped him of everything. Never was they, when they wrote King of the Jews, they wasn't honoring him. They were mocking him. And yet we say, as he is, so are we in this world. I believe that no matter what he faced in all this gory, horrible stuff we read about, it didn't mess up his day. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm with you there. Our, knowing our identity who we are. Yes. Really is a ball changer or, or sorry, game changer. Yeah. Yeah. That too. <laughs> it's a game changer because I spent a lot of this part of my journey with Jesus in the beginning from a young child, you know, all the way through my young ministry days and early days of pastoring, spent a lot of time not really knowing my identity. Now mm -hmm. I knew I was a Christian, but to me, that's not really an identity. That's a title because I was part of this certain group. Not really my identity. I didn't really know that I was a son. I had more confidence in my, my affiliation to a group than I had in my sonship. I, yeah, didn't, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't look at it as I was a son outside of you know, a few verses that said I was a son and said, okay, well, I guess so. I didn't think like a son. And most of the times I didn't feel like a son. Of I course. didn't believe like a son and things of that nature because we're, we were so conditioned to focus on our exterior circumstances and what was going on around us, what we're doing in our flesh and what our bank accounts look like and what the oh, size yeah. of our churches look like and things of this nature. So it was really hard to grab the truth of our identity when we were looking externally. And as soon as we learn to look internally for the truth that's within us, to look to him within us who made us and gave us our identity and we became as he is, well, then that really started changing the ball game. It really started taking us out of this mindset that we're this offering, uh, offering group of people who are just kind mm -hmm. of nomadically mm -hmm. walking around, almost fatherless to an extent. And we came into this relationship experience saying, hey, we're sons, we're, we're, we're kings and we're princes and this is who we are. And, and, and when our mindsets begin to change about that, it really took us to a place of not only expecting our lives to model after that, but it really gave us confidence to demand that our lives model after that. And I know there's, there's times and moments where, like you mentioned, things happen and it can seemingly throw us off course. But mm -hmm. hey, the sun, as you said, never had a bad day. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. Never had I mean, that day. yeah. And, so, and, you know, like today, okay. Been fighting internet problems for almost two weeks. Um, well, really about two weeks or more. And today my, after all the changes and adjustments and trying to fix my end to match their end, my computer crashes and I got to do almost like a, like you do with a phone, a factory reset. And, uh, you know, it, and my words were, you know what? I, I don't need this. Okay, that's, I was like, I don't need this today. 
Uh, you know, because what I'm thinking about is, you know, we got a show to do tonight and we've been held up for a couple of weeks and we got to get this thing done. But the fact is, we never need the bad things that are going on. It, right. It's not about that. Uh, but when they happen, are we going to face them in faith? And let's clarify again that he has given to us a measure of not only the measure of faith, but the measure of his faith. So we have his faith. So are we going to face this with his faith that says, you know what? I know the sister that's closely related to his faith, which is patience. And, and we're just going to deal with this thing, <laughs> you know? So, um, and I want to tell you something, pastor, I've done a lot of programs with people over the years uh, of, of uh, identity, teaching on identity. And we're, I can tell that we're going to have to transition to a, a Friday soon and do a series on identity. But I also have a brother in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, Dr. Glenn Hartline. He's doctor uh, because he has a doctorate in theology, but also, uh, well, I don't know what his doctor's in, but he has another doctor of veterinary medicine. He's a veterinary doctor, a surgeon. And um, uh, Dr. Glenn does a, his ministry side. He has a, a place where he does healing, uh, it's healing and identity. There's three names, healing and identity school. And he's constantly teaching healing from the angle of, look, you first got to know your identity. You got to right. understand who he is in you yeah. so that you can now you can say as he is. So are we in this world with understanding? It's like to say it just like you and I grew up. We confessed a lot of scriptures. Yes, yeah. we got into. And that was our Pentecostal background. Then we right. got into the word of faith camp. And, you know, we confessed a lot of things sometimes because we wanted that stuff to really work yeah. sometimes because we were afraid if we didn't say it, we weren't going to get it someday. I mean, right. there's a lot of reasons yeah. now. Here's what I say. I am Pentecostal. I am word of faith. I am charismatic. I am kingdom. But I place all of that umbra the umbrella of being, uh, yeah, I'm going to say it tonight, an extreme finished works believer. <laughs> uh, I don't know about everything else. There's some right. stuff out there that I like, but I don't know about it. But what I do know is that he finished it all for me and yeah. as me so yeah. that I could be as he is and be that in this world. So yeah. we're healed because God said so. Now, Pastor, last time we, uh, our, our first session, and we started to try to get our second one, uh, there's a scripture in Proverbs 23, 7 that I read the first week. It says, mm -hmm. as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Of course, the word heart there uh, isn't the same as the Greek word, but it means the same. And it's what you have, what you think in your mind, will, intellect, yeah. and emotions in the yeah. core of your being. Yeah. What do you believe about yourself? Because yes. there are people uh, who believe things that God doesn't say about them. Yep. There are people who believe they are as they feel in this world. So, uh, as he is, so are we in this world. Or we could say, as we feel or as we think, so are mm -hmm. we in this world. And that's where a lot of people operate from. Yeah. Um, and I, I believe that one of the things I feel like is my assignment. Uh, I won't tell anybody which password this is, but I have a password that says teaching the nations. That's a long password, capital T, teaching the nations. I won't tell you the rest of it online, but teaching the nations. I feel like that's my job to educate. Um, I, I, I particularly have a passion for ministers. There's mm -hmm. thousands and thousands yeah. and thousands yeah. of ministers around the world yeah. who are preaching this stuff from a practical perspective, yeah. but not from a revelatory perspective perspective right and so if you don't understand who he is not how you determine he is but who he actually is who the revelation of scripture says he is then you're never going to operate at a greater level than where you are right now right right and i'm glad you brought this other part into the conversation about uh as a man thinks in his heart mind so is he mm-hmm now, I, I say this, I've been saying this far back as I can remember. Even, even before I knew I should be saying this, I was saying this. I don't get sick. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been saying that ever since I was a child. My mother would tell me, Kyle, put a coat on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in, in New Jersey, it gets very cold in the winter. I, I don't like to be cold, but I don't like big, heavy coats either. So, you know, if I put on a jacket or a sweater or a hoodie, I'm OK, you know, because I'm not going to be outside for long periods of time because <laughs> yeah. I don't like when I get in the car, and you're trying to drive and you're, you know, you got the big Eskimo coat on. 
So I, w- I would always have a hard time uh, following that rule she gave me. And um, she would say, you're going to get sick. And I would say, no, mom, I'm not, I don't get sick. And it just started off as a kid. Yeah. When I was working my first real full-time job, I, was, I remember one time, <laughs> I, and I'd never taken a day off. I'd never called in sick. And one day the manager asked, asked me, he said, Kyle, you know, you've never taken a sick day. Mm-hmm. I said, well, that's because I, don't, I never get sick. One day <laughs> he was sick as can be. I mean, he, he, was, he was, you know, coming down with the flu and he, he, he came into work and, he, and he's struggling to get through the day. And, uh, you know, the first part of the day there it was too early. And, and, and I said to him, I said, uh, he, I said, man, why, why are you here? You, you, you clearly don't feel well. And he says, yeah, I, I know. And my wife begged me to stay home. And she said, and I said to my wife, I can't. And he, and, and he said, well, she said to him, well, why not? And he replied, well, oh no, she said to him, just, just, you know, stay home and let Kyle know you won't be in today. And he said to her, I, I can't. And she goes, why? And he says, well, well Kyle won't understand. Because Kyle never gets sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I was, I've, I've built this belief system that I don't get sick. Now, do symptoms occasionally come and, and try to convince me otherwise? Sure, sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I've built a belief system as, as I think in my mind about this topic, I don't get sick. So I don't, I don't give it the right to stay, the symptoms to stay. Exactly. I don't give the symptoms a right to get stronger. I don't give my body a chance to respond to it. I do not. Now, I'm not trying to sound like I'm up here and everyone else is below me, but that's just something that I've built in my thinking, my understanding, yeah. my intellect, my will over the years that I don't get sick. If yeah. anything happens outside of what I've declared, decreed, and believe about me, I call it a violation. I tell it it's here illegally. I tell it I didn't invite it to come. And yeah. I tell it it has to go because you are in, an intruder into my space. Therefore, uh, you have to go. Now, that's how I think in my heart, my will, my mind, my emotions about sickness. Here's one of our problems, Pastor, you know. If people was to say, well, uh, Kyle Butler has a revelation that he never gets sick. Therefore, he doesn't get sick. And if he does, it's rectified fast, quick, and in a hurry. So now I'm going to take that on. I heard when I was uh, uh, just just left the, the denomination I was raised in. Um, this was back in 1981 or 82. Uh, I heard Fred Price, Dr. Fred Price, teach and say, I was, uh, we, we had to invest some money, put some money down on a business deal. It's a hundred thousand dollars. And he said, uh, he said, uh, the deal went sour. We lost all of our, a hundred thousand dollars. And most of us that pastor smaller churches would say, man, I could have used that. But he says, and he said, you know what? I just played the French thing on it. It said, passez-vous, French for pass it on by. And he said, I, I made a decision that I would never get discouraged another day as long as I live. You know what I did? I caught a hold of that and I mm-hmm. and I was listening to his tape series and mm-hmm. I said, you know what? I got a revelation. I'll yeah. never get discouraged again as long as I live. And you know, it wasn't but somewhere within a couple of weeks, man, I hit rock bottom because I was living off that guy's revelation right, that right. didn't actually become a revelation to me. Right. And that's one of the things we have uh, missed heard or misinterpreted or has been misinterpreted to us in these different camps we've walked in right. is somebody got a revelation mm-hmm. and we started trying to live off of their revelation because it was sort of, you know, semi forcibly imposed upon us and we couldn't do it because it hadn't become a revelation to us. Now you brought up a scripture a while ago. I'd like to address and that's Galatians two twenty, where Paul said, I was crucified with Christ. Of course, I'd like to read that tonight out of the Passion Translation. Uh, I didn't know it was this good, but it is. And I'll put it up on the screen just for a moment so everybody can uh, see it there. Uh, But the Passion Translation says, uh, my old identity, since we brought up identity and talking about healing, my, uh, uh, I put up the wrong thing. Let me, let me rectify that right now. Okay. 
my old identity has been co-crucified with Messiah and no longer lives. Semicolon. For the nails of his cross crucified me with him. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one lives his life through me. We live in union as one. <laughs> My new life is empowered by faith, by the faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself for me and dispenses his life into mine. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. is so powerful. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, yeah. and that's such a, an important fact that it's what he did and he thought of us as he was doing it. So he brought all mankind and all humankind into himself and said, okay, what I'm doing I'm going to do for all mankind. This is who they are. When I did it, it not only identify, uh, clarifies who I am, but it also clarifies all mankind as the same thing. Now I can say, as he is, so are we in this world. Yeah, I, I really uh, enjoy that passion translation. And I tell you what, I'm going to say this. I might get in trouble for it. And I'm not saying that you have to agree with me. I'm just going to say it because it's what I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've, I've often thought to myself, man, I would really like to know what Paul really wrote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for you know, sure. I, I just, I, this is me. This is me. I, I just think things got watered down over the years. You know, when we look at what we, we ended up with, with the King James, the, the standard as we read uh -huh. it, I didn't think that, you know, this, this got taken out and that word got watered down and it's, you know, we kind of got a watered down version. So when you read, you read it now in the, in the passion translation of some of these other wonderful translations, I think they're bringing back to life what was really said, because what you just read sounds like something Paul would have wrote word for word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, Paul and you was know, educated. He was elo eloquent in his writing. Oh, yeah. He, you know, he had, he had tremendous information and knowledge. And just to write these little one-line scriptures, I don't see that. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, and I, of course, since my computer crashed today, I don't have everything reloaded. But, uh, but I can imagine even the Mirror Bible. Uh, yeah. I think you're friends with this guy on Facebook too, just yes, like yes, I am. Francois. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I've had some a few great conversations with him. And what a powerful uh, version of the Bible! What a powerful rendition yeah. of Scripture. As he is, you know. I mean, let let's face it. You know, my wife asked me one time. She says, "Why aren't there more Bibles being written?" Now think about that, because yeah. we think that Daniel and Moses and, right. and, and, and then Paul and Peter and, and J J John, they wrote the Bible, right. boom, God's message is over. We have right. God's message start to finish, Genesis to Revelation, right. that's it. That's not it. Not at Why all. Are, and so not we right. have some modern day Pauls. That's right. We have some modern day Johns. That's right. We have some modern day uh, disciples, which is a disciple is really translated a learner or a student. We have some students of the word who are passionate, not about the next greatest move, not about the next greatest revelation or rendition of the revelation, but about the heart of the father. Yes. What does God have to say? And if God were speaking to me today, how would he interpret what Paul said directly right. to me? Right. And so we've got some people like that who are hearing, just like Francois and just mm -hmm. like whoever wrote the Passion Translation. They're hearing what God would have actually said before yeah. someone got the idea <laughs> that the very first English <laughs> translation of the Bible, right. which was not the King James, okay, <laughs> right. Right, right, got the right. idea that that was the true Bible. <laughs> someone told me one time, said, Pastor, I believe you preach uh, you preach out of Paul's Bible. I said, yeah, it's in my library in my office. I'm in, on the bush. I got Paul's Bible. Uh, you know, we just we just get these goofy ideas. And honestly, Pastor, they're called religion. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. You know, the reason why I said that is because, you know, the, that that passion translation, that verse is it's just so it's so packed. Right. Mm -hmm. It's so full the, the mm -hmm. way that it that is written there. Now, when you read that. 
you can you can just dive into all of that truth mm-hmm. and really it starts to expand your uh, your imagination which then really gets down into your understanding and you start imagining your imagining yourself with his faith like that you start imagining yourself actually there with him co partnering right there hand in yeah. hand embrace together in this journey you're him he's you you're one I mean, it just really starts to stir up the imagination and then it yeah. gets down into your knowing and you're walking and believing and, and, and knowing with this type of knowledge. And that's really the, 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 what the Holy Spirit uh, uh, really, really desires to do for us. And, and yeah. I'm not saying that people don't hear the Holy Spirit. I don't, I'm not saying people don't sure. listen to the sure. Holy Spirit, but <clears throat> that writer... Francois for the mirror and the writer of the the passion and different ones like that. They just, they just took time to let the spirit speak through them as to what the father's saying to us in this day and age about these very same things. And, you know, we, I grew up like this, Dr. Bill, there's a verse, I believe in revelation, you'll probably know this for sure, where it's at, it says, you know, don't take anything away or add from it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, and, and, boy, have I heard that quote? <laughs> right, and we would not. We were too afraid to paraphrase a verse while we were preaching as young men. So we wouldn't even paraphrase. We we, we would. I mean, if we if we thought it, we we knew what it was. We would try our best to say it and say, "Excuse me, I, I know I'm not supposed to take anything or add anything away from it." So, but you know, having that misunderstanding of that, it it, it put us in this place to to think that. I mean, this is what was written. That's the way it has to be. That's all it could be. And don't you deviate from it one ounce. Yeah. And that wasn't the yeah. case at all. That, that wasn't the case. This, we have the Holy Spirit, as I mentioned, living inside of us, revealing, showing us, making it bigger, right? Giving us a greater understanding, a greater insight to what's really being said. Uh, someone right. who, is, who is struggling tonight with healing or, or you know, believing for healing or waiting on healing or, or like I like to say waiting on the manifestation of what's already mm-hmm. yours mm-hmm. you're 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 waiting for the manifestation and you know the spirit of truth is inside of you and and he so desires to just give you some instruction perhaps it, it may be something really simple I remember one time back in the day um, I was on my way to Colorado for a trip it was seven o'clock at night. We we're going to leave that evening, seven o'clock at night. And I was, you know, I started having this toothache and it was, it started pounding. It's seven o'clock at night. I know I can't get to a dentist and I know that I'm traveling with this group of people. We're on our way to Colorado and I know I cannot go this whole, I forget how many hours it was, this road trip to Colorado with this tooth painting me this way. So I left the group as they were saying goodbye to their relatives. I left the group, went outside and said, dad, I don't know what to do here. I'm in a bind. And he said, see that blade of grass over there? Go take that blade of grass and bite on it. Mm. And I walked right over to that blade of grass, took it, bit it. And I kid you not, my friends, that toothache went away and it never came back. Now, I'm saying all that to say the Holy Spirit inside of me knew exactly what to do and yeah, spoke to me and told me exactly what to do. And it, it, I don't know if there's a story here <laughs> that, that, that tells me to, to, to verse, you know, five of chapter <laughs> 17 of, of a yeah. book that tells yeah. me if you have a tooth, they go find a piece of grass and bite on it. I don't think there's a verse for that. But there is a right. verse that says, I sent my word and I healed you. That word is That's living it. on the inside of us. That word will speak to us in many, many different ways. And, and I think that is just absolutely phenomenal that we have this truth on the inside of us. And we're, 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 co, we're co-partners, so to speak, with it. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, you know, Pastor Kyle, I mean, we almost... Uh, it, 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 we, we almost could speak what the other's thinking. Uh, we, we flow that well together. You know, we're in no way saying, you know, throw your Bible away. Right. Uh, ignore what the Bible says. You know, the problem as a teacher of, of theology and, and the, of hermeneutics, what, what I see is, is that we just don't go that next step. 
we right. think it's sacrilegious. It's against God to actually say, well, you know, what if these words in my good old King James Version are actually could be wrong because let's face it, sometimes, I mean, as a young pastor, you know what I did? Faithful to the King James. Here's what I did. If I didn't understand it and it didn't make sense to me, let's just skip over that and go to something else that we do understand. Let's don't try to understand that because that's that must not be for us. You know, we don't know all the ways of God. We don't know all the thoughts of God. You know, hogwash. I yeah. mean, he 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 wants us to understand everything that he is. So he yeah. gave us his word. The thing we lacked was the revelation of his word. Now, I want to tell you something about revelation, brothers and sisters tonight. And uh, uh, you, you can't get revelation uh, unless you're willing to step outside the box of yes. the norm of your biblical upbringing. As a matter of fact, I have a, I made a note. I'm often, often sending notes to my, uh, to my cell phone, through my texting program. And I'm going to do, I want to do, a, and this may be our thing, uh, thinking outside the box of religion. Oh, yeah. uh, that, that's going to be a good show right there. And, and we, we have to be able to think outside the box of religion to say, okay, yeah, I wasn't raised this way. Okay. You know, mom and dad didn't teach me this way. And that was all the Bible college I had till I actually got old enough to actually have some Bible college. But the fact is, uh, you got to be able to think outside that box because remember, as we've established on other shows, that theology, especially systematic theology, is at two levels. It's reading that which is on black and white, and, you know, we take that to heart. But there's also the second phase of theology, which is seeing what is written in between the lines. That's right. called revelation. Right. Now, in our word of faith background, we call that revelation knowledge. Thank God for revelation knowledge that I can do more than just preach a scripture and say, well, this scripture means this. And, you know, here's why I think this means this. We can actually go to the how about this? The language that it was actually written in and look at what they were dealing with that day. What street corner were on? What was the significance of the surroundings then? Yeah. Was there any eyewitnesses, other eyewitnesses? Oh, I know Josephus one. Here's the here's the big thing. One born again according to the the norm. <laughs> but 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 since born again for all of you, I'm just going to give everybody a homework assignment tonight. Since born again really doesn't mean born again, and born again had to be talking about being born of one covenant or another covenant. Okay, you, that that'll so don't don't click up, don't click off our show tonight. Don't don't change the, <laughs> don't change the channels because I said something that's outside the box. But 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 even Josephus was covered by the blood of Jesus, and he didn't know it. But yeah. he was there among others like him that said, you know what? I was an eyewitness. I saw what happened. I yeah. saw at AD 70 when the city was flooded with a substance called the blood of the people when the, 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 the priest said, come to the tabernacle, come to the temple, you'll be safe there. And 6,000 people at least gather in the temple and not counting everybody in the streets and the soldiers and, so, and this war going on. And then it was the blood of the people that finally flowed and put out that fire. And Josephus says, that, my friend, is the lake of fire. Oh, you preach that to somebody. because Why? Because we're afraid to step outside the box right. of Revelation. Right. So here I am. There's pain. There's difficulty, there's trouble, and I move either moved by my circumstances or I moved by what Jesus did in his finished work. And Jesus says, by my stripes, you have been healed. So now you're faced with a decision. Do I believe what Jesus said? I mean, can the guy really be trusted, okay? I mean, <laughs> you know, I know he's the son of God, but the Jews didn't accept him. There might be some truth to that. Here's the fact. You're going to believe what Jesus said or you're going to believe what your, your flesh man is telling you at this moment. You got a decision to make. Yeah, absolutely. You absolutely have a decision to make. You know, um, our dear sister, uh, Jackie, she's w watching tonight, Jackie Walker. She, she wrote here, we can understand because we have the mind of Christ. Ah. And, and that's, that's, whoa, that, whew, that just, <laughs> yeah. And, and cause I know you mentioned that um, that, that little part about you know, for, for years we were taught we could not understand. For, for mm -hmm. years we were mm -hmm. taught, well, we don't know what he knows. And we took that verse way out of context. His ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And yep. we, we just totally just put ourselves in this, this subservient uh, 
position of, well, God knows all things and he works in mysterious ways. And all we can do is go by this mysterious, uh, you know, behavior. And, you know, if, if it, if it, we go outside one day and it's, it's, it's red skies. Well, that's God trying <laughs> to tell us something. you know. And that wasn't the case at all. We, we totally overlooked. You mentioned John who wrote, differently from the first three gospel writers. Yeah, yeah. And John comes in and he gives us an insight to Jesus and the Holy Spirit like no one else. He gives us the insight to the, to the working of the Holy Spirit and the purpose of the Holy Spirit and what yeah. he's going to do and how he's going to do it and what joy the Holy Spirit's going to have doing it. I mean, you know, you, you see this beautiful dance with God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and each one working with mankind at all times, but then seemingly each one taking their own personal time with mankind. You, you got the father in the garden doing the creation, building, putting things mm -hmm, together. Mm -hmm. You get Jesus coming on the scene and, okay, Jesus, now the spotlight is really on you. And then you have the Holy Spirit in the background waiting for the baton to kind of be handed to him. And he's so excited. I mean, he, he just, he or she, the, you know, some say she for the Holy Spirit, and that's cool too with me. He or she is so super excited. Just, oh, I can't wait. I just can't wait to get in here and really fulfill my part in humanity's uh, uh, journey. And we have the Holy Spirit, right? And, and he knows all things. And he said, John told us that the Holy Spirit was going to remind us of all things, <clears throat> all things. That mm -hmm. means we knew some things we forgot. <laughs> Come on now. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> oh, man. And one of those things we forgot is that we are healed, that divine health is ours, that we walk every single yeah. day in divine health, and the Holy Spirit is here to remind us of this truth. Yeah. So thank you for that, uh, Sister Jackie. Yes, yes. Now, uh, you know, we're, we're not limited as far as I know tonight. I, I, we've been shutting down a little over an hour. I, I, it's just a fluke thing, I guess. But, uh, but I, I want to I clarify something. We, uh, when, when you mention Isaiah 55, yeah. uh, 8, mm -hmm. uh, that our ways are not his ways, our thoughts are not his thoughts, you know, what that was for me was an invitation to come up to his way of thinking Mm -hmm. which produces his way of doing. Right. Um, and of course, the cross did that for us. Right. Now we got to think of Isaiah. Isaiah is a great one to prophesy about Jesus. Yeah. And, and you remember that just prior to chapter 55, chapter 54 was where he said, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Mm -hmm. Every time that rise, boy, we made that a cliche that, that there's too many standalone scriptures. Right. right, uh, right you know, right. we, we have ministry since I'm in, involved in a, um, you know, um, a, 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 a sort of Pentecostal traditional Christian university, uh, which I'm not teaching this quarter again, but, but then our kingdom university coming up, we, we, we will be able to clarify. I want a, a one course pastor just totally on grace, okay, yeah. understanding grace, yeah. uh, but also how to interpret scripture. For right. example, people are taking these scriptures and they're standalone scriptures that have nothing to do with what they just quoted. So guess what Isaiah 55 starts out? And, and it doesn't say these words exact, but but really the trans, the writers have said, here's what he's talking about. It's an invitation to abundant life. Yes. Wait a minute. Yeah. Jesus gave that same invitation in John chapter 10. Right. And it's fulfilled at the cross. Yeah. And he he's telling these people, look, there's some stuff you really don't understand. My ways are not your ways. My ways are above your ways. They're, and what he's saying to a people is you've been thinking under the law. Right, you've been exactly. thinking carnally. Right. You've been moved by what you see and moved by what you feel. You haven't right. been moved by anything that I promised. Right. And, you know, the truths of God, the, the truths of the finished work were established before the foundation of the world. Right. They were ratified mm -hmm. in our in this human existence at the right. cross. But right. prior to that, there was some powerful, 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 powerful revelation through the prophetic words of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And so when he gets to that, he, he says, look, seek the Lord while he may be found. That, that doesn't sound, that, that sounds like we're so far away from God. Right, right. Uh, you know, the, the unrighteousness 
of man his thoughts, let him return to the Lord. And here's what will happen. He will abundantly pardon him. Now, now, then we say, my thoughts are not your thoughts. You know, are God's ways wiser than, of course. Are his, his thoughts greater than, of course. But that's the whole point of him saying, but you have you the have. mind of Christ. Yeah, yeah. So that as he is, so are we in this world. Yeah. And he says, the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and says the water don't rain. Is it talking about rain and snow? Absolutely not. Because he clarifies and says, so shall my word be that goes forth right. out of my mouth. It will right. not return to me. Boy, if you declare a thing, that's exactly what it will be. It will prosper in the thing where I, until I send it. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Whose peace? The peace of Jesus has been given to us. A peace that's beyond all human comprehension. In other words, beyond carnal thinking. Yeah. So today... Uh, while we've taken a, a trail that certainly was not what we thought we were going to take today. The, <laughs> that the seems fact, to happen it, almost every show. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I couldn't imagine us ministering in a conference and, and doing a team thing, you know. Uh, but here's the thing. Um, you're healed not because you feel healed. No. You're healed because God said so. Right. Pastor, that was the greatest revelation uh, that ever came to me in the things that I've faced that I don't tell a whole lot about uh, uh, publicly, but the greatest revelation, I'm not sick because I feel sick. I'm healed because God said I'm healed. Right. And so it just exploded in me. I'm not the sick trying to get healed. In other words, I'm not the sick trying to get what Jesus already paid for, for me to have. Right. I'm already that. Why? Hey, it's real simple because he said so, <laughs> you know, if I can't live off of what he said, you know, every word that Jesus said, a man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of. Now, of course, here we go again. <laughs> Jesus was talking about the law. He was talking about something way back then. He wasn't talking about right then. Jesus was not in the wilderness. OK, there's a whole I got a whole message on that. But the point is, is we just take so many things wrongly because it's based on my carnal perception of right. who said what, who re I respect those over me. They told me this. I believe it. I'll believe it till the day I die. Yeah, you probably will, but you don't have to. You can believe you're healed. And as you believe in your heart, as a man thinks in his heart, as a person thinks in their heart, so are you. So what are the thoughts of your heart? Are the meditations of your thoughts and of your heart, the meditations of his heart? John heard the heartbeat of the father. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to the heartbeat of the father? Because the father will never say, my son, my daughter, you are sick. No, no. You know, we start at finished. That's where we oh, start. Come on now. We, we start at finished. If you're not careful, based upon what you think you know, and, you know, yeah. maybe what you've been hearing all your life, religion teaches us to to work towards finished and like we're working towards the cross. We're working, you know, Hey, pick up your cross and follow me. There, there, there's a, a truckload of believers believing that every day you got to pick up your cross and follow him. Well, my goodness, how do you ever get to finished? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> how do you, how do you ever arrive at finished if you picked up this cross and you followed after him in that sense? So of course that's not what we're supposed to be doing. And that was, was spoken to, you know, and metaphorically to a people at that moment because he hadn't gone yet. Mm -hmm. We start at finished. Mm -hmm. And when you can start at finished, you, you said I'm an extreme finished works preacher. That's who I am. And I'm proud of it. And I, 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 don't, I don't know if there's a better way to describe it because it was finished. And that's where we start. That's where we should have started. I believe this with all my heart for every person who who gets awakened or acknowledges or becomes aware of who they are, who they have always been from our father mm -hmm. perspective, that moment you become aware, your starting place is finished. Your starting place is grace. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, a lot of us didn't get it that way. We, we, we became aware and they took us by the hand and marched us straight to the law. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you know? man. And then gave us a list of do's and don'ts. And this is how you get it right. And this is how you stay right. Mm -hmm. And we lived there for a long time. And my goodness, you know, we, we made very little progress as far as true revelation.
And I yeah. thank God because he was with us through those days, Dr. Dale. He, he was still showing us things. Thank God. The Holy Spirit can only show us what we're able to receive. There, right. there are things that I know now that I know I would have rejected easily, quickly yes. back then. I was, yes. yeah. now, that's the devil trying to deceive me, man. I'm, I'm not going down <laughs> that road. Uh-uh. Right, you ain't going to have me going to hell. I would have rejected so much of what I understand right now. And, but the Holy Spirit, though, through those times, he was still revealing, still showing, because he understood the journey. He understood that yeah. this is a journey as we go from faith to faith and glory to glory and grace to grace as we're, we're moving down this path. The only thing, though, everyone needs to understand is that we start at finished. That's where we start. And we, the journey goes on from there. Yeah. You know, uh, this, I won't be having a broadcast this Thursday night or this Friday morning. Uh, I'll be doing a video tomorrow to, to explain that. Um, but, um, uh, the, the, the thing is I, I've got a Friday show that I'll be continuing and I'm going to make adjustments on all my shows as far as giving more time because of, of the internet problems we've had. But, but we've been talking about, uh, apostle Emil Alston from South Africa. We've been talking about shifting from an outer court identity. Yeah. And, and I'd like to read one passage of scripture, whether this is our closing or not in Hebrews uh, from that show, Hebrews nine twenty four through 26. It says for, and this is out of the New King James. I, I can't imagine what this would read out of the Passion Translation. Uh, but he says, for Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which right. are copies of the truth, but into heaven itself. And that means into the, the abode of God, the Aranas, uh, now to appear in the presence of God for us, not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another, he would have, he then would have to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of ages, and talking about the end of the age that, of the, that Jesus was in, he appeared to put away sin. Uh, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now, there's more to that, of course, but very simply stated, where Jesus finished, which was in the most holy place, because mm -hmm. his blood was spread on the mercy seat, uh, and we're not talking about the mercy seat of Moses' tabernacle or David's tabernacle. We're talking about the heavenly mercy seat. He is our mercy seat. His blood was shed, and here's the truth. We always thought that when we came to Jesus, uh, like what Hebrews, um, what is it, uh, 4, uh, 12, th uh, thir 13, 14, 15 says that, that uh, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. And we have to work our way to the throne of right. grace so that we can feel better. One day I got a revelation about that is how can I get better if I can't get to, to his throne of grace so that he can make me better. And then I realized what Paul's talking about is the finished work of Jesus, that yeah. he, that where he ended is where he brought you in at, right. in at so that you could be right. And it's yeah. just like uh, Irvin um, um, Reed. uh, Reed's comment, everything God did in Jesus was to fix everything that was wrong in us. You are fixed. Yeah. And I know people out there tonight, Pastor Kyle, are not feeling fixed. They're not feeling like everything's okay in their life, but they're living life based on their feelings, based on the emotional uh, uh, realm, based on the things that were preached to them even as children. We learned it in Sunday school, and we learned it growing up, and we incorporated those beliefs. It's time to have an upgrade in your belief system. It's time to have a, a revelation download so that you can come up to his way of thinking. Now, it's already in you, okay? The mind of Christ is in you. He's just waiting for you to say, look, Lord, I'm willing to throw away the garbage that has kept me bound. It was supposed to set me free, but it's kept me bound. You know, the old song, Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. <laughs> and, and, you know, you're still in that prison, but it's not the prison of some devil. It's the prison of your own religious thinking. And yeah. Jesus is saying, look, it's time for you to let that go and come into his mind, seeing what he thinks, seeing what he feels so that you can truly uh, be free, live in the freedom that he's provided for you. So uh, finish this up tonight, Pastor. Go, go wherever you want to go with this. 
the <clears throat> the mind of Christ you just mentioned. I want to go back real fast to as a man thinks, so is he. Mm-hmm. In, in my in my daily meditation, my daily time of meditation, I, I I say to the Spirit of Truth that's living inside of me, Spirit of Truth, show me what I need to see over certain areas of my life. So show yes. me what I need to see about my finances, which you're going to only show me the truth. Show me what you need to show me, uh, what I need to see about the ministry, because what you're going to show me is only the truth. Show me, because I need to get that image in my understanding. I need to get that image in my mind. I need to see it in my mind. I need to see what the Spirit sees Amen. about me, about the, the different areas of my life. I, I no longer want to look at my with my eyes. I want to see what the spirit sees. So in my time of meditation, I want to get into a place where I can start to visualize in my mind what the truth really is, because it really all comes from the inside out. We've tried to have a linear relationship. We believe that everything was going up to, you know, to up to heaven and then down back to the earth. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jacob's ladder, the dream of Jacob's ladder for all of the mysteries that's in there probably messed up us, messed us up more than anything because we just felt Come like on. we had this linear up and down relationship. We pray up and everything comes down and we believe up and everything comes down and we've overlooked what's inside of us. You know, I'll use this verse and, and you know, I've, I've given you the power to get wealth. Well, that, that mm-hmm. power, I'm going to use the word power. And as the example, the power is inside of us. It's not externally. It's not something that's coming from an external force or external uh, source. It's internal. When the Lord told me back in 2007, Kyle, I am the source of your supply. It took me a long time to really understand what he was saying. I kept looking for him to provide externally, you know, these external things that keep coming into my life. And so, um, and, 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 but over time, I learned what he was saying. The, the int- I live internally inside of you. The source is inside of you, and the source comes out from you. That's and it. that's what we need to understand, my dear friends. If you, ha- if you don't do this, I encourage you to do it. Take some time. Ask the Spirit to show you healed. Get that image in your mind. Mm-hmm. Get, get mm-hmm. that image in your mind so you can begin to see yourself healed, so that you can begin to see yourself as you're seen and as you're really known. And in time, your mind will begin to convince your body of what's true. So yep. I want to encourage you with that. I think that that is a, a very, very powerful thing, Dr. Bill. Um, and, and I just also think that we just haven't really paid attention to how powerful as a man thinks in his heart, mind, will, and emotions he is. I don't think we've really paid attention to just how epically powerful that is. And I want to say this as well. The Bible, more than anything, is full of... um, full of words and things and truths about humanity as a whole. It's not speaking to, you know, Jewish people particularly. It's not speaking to Christian people particularly. It's speaking to humanity as a whole. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That speaks to all of humanity as a whole. That's how powerful it is. Amen. Amen. Let me leave you with one last scripture tonight. Um, uh, I, I can't. I can't help myself. Uh, Pastor Kyle mentioned um, um, the, the the power to get wealth, the thing that's already in you. Yeah. You you all remember the scripture that says, "According to that power that works within you." Yeah. Uh, I, I got to give you the passion translation. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the passion translation on that verse. Uh, it says. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will actively, he will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request. Uh, Some of these words, I believe, could be translated a little better. Uh, Your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all for his miraculous Power constantly energizes you. 
<laughs> Why? Because his power is in you. Yeah. Folks, the, and when you pray for strength, realize this. I, I know people need strength for what they're walking through, the strength to walk through it, get to the other side. But here's the thing. Uh, the level of God's strength doesn't change from while you're entering into a situation, while you're in the middle of a situation, and as you're coming out of a situation. The same strength to get you through it and get you out of it that we, you went into it with is the same. His strength is in you. So when you pray, you're saying, strength, Lord. Give me strength, Lord, or healing, healing, Lord. Oh, God, I got to have finances. Would you please cause dollars to rain down? Out, well, make those hundred dollars rain down out of heaven. <laughs> would, would you please, Lord? And we believe all kinds of stuff. Now, I'm not opposed to going to the mailbox every day with, with expected faith. Whole, a Bible hope is confident expectation of right. That's the definition. Yeah. I'm not against that. Go to your post office box. You know, hold out your hand. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, you'll give eight at uh, seven and eight times and and you'll you'll expect to receive the very yeah. next day or the next moment. Yeah. He's talking about sowing seed. And I'm not against any of that. Just make sure you don't put your faith in the seed or the return of the seed. Uh, don't put your faith in anything external. Keep your faith on that which is already in you, which is the fullness of of God. The fullness of God lives in you so that you, and we could say the completeness of God lives in you. Why? Yeah. So that you can be clean, complete. Yeah. Amen. 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 Pastor Kyle, what a joy. I'm so glad this internet is fixed and they're still adjusting it, tweaking a few things, but mm -hmm. I'm so glad this is all better and we were able to do this show tonight. Me too. Me too. Me too. Yeah. And thank you so much for taking the time. I, I guess you're what an hour uh, ahead of me. It's uh, must be I, I, yeah, right, right now. Yeah, right, well, actually, right now I'm in Texas, uh, so oh. uh, I'll be I'll be here for just a little bit more. Okay. And um, okay, but so we're we're on the same time. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Well, great. So uh, I we I plan to be back next Tuesday, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not teaching Bible college this quarter again uh, because of uh, a situation and um, nothing bad. Um, I'll be doing my take another look program in the morning, everybody, please make sure if you don't, if you're not working, uh, that you watch, um, take another look. I'm in revelation chapter, uh, 12. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Um, uh, chapter 12 verses 13. Um, let's see here. Uh, 13 and 14, uh, the revel, go ahead and read that tonight, but the revelation of that is so powerful. And, um, uh, so I'll be teaching in the morning. It's my largest show in terms of how much time it's like a college crash course. A lot of information is given in about an hour's time. And so you'll want to watch that. Uh, but then I'll be making a special video tomorrow afternoon, probably early, uh, and I'll be letting everybody know what's going on and uh, where I'll be for the rest of the week. Uh, but but I will be. Uh, what time is it? At, uh, Sherry Sam, it's 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Uh, my time, Central Standard Time, 10 a.m. And uh, please watch it. If you miss it, it'll always be right there on my YouTube channel. It'll uh, not only my YouTube channel, but on my Facebook timeline. It'll be right there. Uh, then I also will take this broadcast tonight, just like always. I'll download it to my computer, upload it to my YouTube, and then share it again. So there'll actually be two different versions. Um, and and um, so a, a lot of good stuff. And then next week, Pastor Kyle, we'll be back on Tuesday. And uh, we may do something extra since we've had to miss a couple of weeks. Um, and then back to my routine, Wednesday, take another look. Thursday, Kingdom Dynamics. Uh, next week, uh, no broadcast this Thursday, but next week, um, oh, it will be Thanksgiving. <laughs> so there won't be a kingdom dynamics. I'll be, we got a lot of family coming in. Um, the week after that, we'll be making up the show that got messed up the other night with Dr. Jimmy Lewis from St. James, Missouri. And, uh, he's, he's a walking Bible, a great wealth of knowledge, that guy. And, uh, so a lot of good stuff planning. Uh, there's this guy, everybody, they know Paul Gray. Um, ah, Paul, yeah, Paul yeah, Gray, yeah, yeah, Janu yeah. January oh, the 3rd on Kingdom oh, yeah. Dynamics. Oh, yeah. um, evangelist Gary Hetherington, December the 6th from, uh, if we can make it happen, from uh, South Wales, Australia. 
uh, Bishop Gary Parson from Oklahoma on December the 13th. Uh, I've only got two more dates and I've, I've got some names. I'm about to get those booked up to fill up the rest of the year. Uh, and then don't forget our Tuesday show. We do series programs. And then on Friday, uh, Friday morning conversations, we do series shows. So I've got four shows. Three of them are talk shows. One of them is uh, just me teaching. Uh, but we've got so much potential, Pastor. We're still not doing yeah. live talk with Faye, where she brings guests on and interviews them. Uh, we still aren't doing WBS campus chat. Where we talk about college stuff. Uh, so there's just so much opportunity to preach the gospel. Yeah. Because chances are, the more shows we have per week, uh, the more chances we have. It's. It, I, and I don't gamble. If you want to gamble, go ahead. You you can roll the dice. But for me, gambling is do a bunch of shows with the potential of reaching the whole world. Yeah, that's all I'm after is the whole world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just the world. Hey, <laughs> so, uh, so thank you, Pastor, for joining me tonight, and um, uh, we, we've got some good stuff ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I, I enjoy coming on here with you, and we've we've done uh, quite a few so far. And everyone, e everyone, I've enjoyed everyone, and what however many we do in the future, I, I I'm, I'm sure without any question, I'll enjoy the rest of yeah. the rest as well. Yeah, same here. So thank you, everyone. We've had such a tremendous response tonight. I'm sure the comments are overwhelming, let alone uh, the amount of people that have watched this show live and those that will see it after the fact as people are getting up in countries all over the world. Uh, we get comments from literally all over the world. And I don't know a nation who has not watched our program. I'm so blessed. Uh, it's nothing I ever tried to make happen. I tell you, it's a God thing, and I'm so blessed. So God bless you. Thank you so much. And Pastor Kyle and I will be back together next Tuesday, and uh, then we'll see where things go from there. So uh, good night, everyone. Thank you for watching uh, Healed Because God Said So. And I want to tell you, that's a fact. Amen, Amen Pastor Kyle. Amen. 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 God bless you. Have a great evening wherever you are or a great day if you're getting up somewhere around the world. We'll see you soon. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.